Sup, losers, wake up. Jason? No, fuck your intro skit. You! You got what I need! <laughs> so, serious? Me, Kurome, and Nihilistic Snake are doing a commentary on this guy called Lunatic the Game, who did a rant on Gligar 13 vids. Now, instantly, at a snap of a finger, there are two things wrong with this video. One, it's a Gligar rant, and last time I checked, Gligar 13 vids was a overdone topic and a troll. And continuing- Well, great to know your line delivery is about as competent as this video's audio editing. Excuse me while I nurse my eardrums in the wake of that burst of static. And continuing with Clown Dude's point, this rant is actually a commentary. This means he lied. Either that or he's too stupid to understand the difference between a rant and a commentary. Either way, wouldn't surprise me. It's obviously going to be the latter, since lied implies that he deliberately went out of his way to mislead people. If you think about it, there wouldn't be any reason for him to do this, making it the latter by way of process of elimination. I also look back through Lunatic the Gamer's content, and given that this and another video he did two months prior to now are the only videos like this, it's fairly reasonable to assume that Lunatic isn't familiar with the CC, and thus wouldn't know the terminology, combined with how he had no outward intention of fitting in with the CC. That's not stupidity, that's inexperience. But you say he's just a friend. I didn't realize I had the technology I could use until now, but I was like, do I really want to talk about this, this guy? And I was like, because I feel like all the things I said back when I was little, okay, not really little, I'm still little, but all the things I talked about when I was like 10 and 11. Okay, cool it with the arbitrary counter gag. We get it already. Lunatic didn't script his shit. Or at least I got it, but only on my second time watching, seeing how off to the side this counter gag is. You got what I need. Like, would you, like we're, I'm gonna try to find out that. So, well, without a further ado, let's get started. Okay, that intro was way too long. Yeah, if only he had written a hashtag sipped beforehand. A lot of it could have been cut out since it mostly is useless fucking filler. For example, most of the time you just said he's a troll. So, let me ask you a question. If Gliger is a troll, why give him attention? If you know he's just doing this on purpose, then why make a video responding to him? The whole point of trolling is to ignore them and not give them attention. No, the point of trolling is to rile up people who are easily outraged. Hell, Lunatic himself has even said as much. If you don't know what a troll is, if you're like, if you just joined YouTube like five days ago, a, a troll is somebody who likes to majorly uh, make people angry on the internet. What you're describing is a methodology to deal with constant spats of trolling. Sloth, do you just have the buzzwords in your mind when making your scripts and just forget to actually put them together in some sort of actual structure and instead just slop them down onto an A4 sheet of paper in an order that sounds vaguely smart? If you didn't have the technology to make the video, scrap the video. Why? Because Gligar is- Whoa, uh, clown dude? You, um, you wanna fix that chroma key on your avatar there, man? It kinda shorted out just now. Also, you have Black Borders Matter. Here are some remedies for this problem. Stopping you right there! Leaving aside the poorly veiled kissing up to Ryan, I've been wanting to tackle the whole Black Borders Matter thing since I knew from first hearing it that brain-dead talentless hacks would twist and misinterpret the phrase to somehow mean HAVING BLACK BORDERS IS SUCH A BAD THING! Firstly, anyone who's been around in this community longer than a few months will know the CC hasn't been using backgrounds for the longest time. Hell, I myself have been making commentary since 2011, and I didn't start using a background until 2004. 15. Sure, backgrounds do make one's presentation better in one way or another, but if not having a background is such a bad thing in and of itself that it warrants that buzzword, well then you'd better be ready to crucify a metric ton of your favourite commentators. Secondly, referring specifically to the video where that phrase comes from, Ryan was using the term to describe YouTube Dude's presentation and complaining about how he tries to play the hypocrisy game with Comet Jack over his perceived poor presentation. Yet YouTube Dude didn't have a background, which was one aspect of his presentation by the way, while Comet Jack did. Also, if we were playing the what's more visually appealing game, at least Comet Jack has a background while you still have hashtag Black Borders Matter. Note how nowhere in that clip does Ryan imply that having no background is a bad thing in and of itself, and that's of course leaving aside what Greystone Ejaculator has already said about this arbitrary obnoxious meme. Like, can we please just try not to make Black Borders Matter the 2016 equivalent of what I thought Argumentum Ad Dictionarium would end up as? Please? It's already irritating that some of you fuckers can't even spell it right. But you say he's just a friend. But you say he's just a friend. Oh, baby. Not knowing that Nintendo is headed down the same way Atari and Sega were.
because that's what's happening with Nintendo right now. So let's get to problem number one with Nintendo. They've got no third-party games. Besides this one. When Blagar said Nintendo had no third-party games, he meant that there was barely any. Do you know how? Because he was speaking figuratively, not literally. Ah, I get it now. Speaking figuratively is now automatically a license to just say something and have it mean whatever factually inaccurate bollocks we want, as long as those fine chaps of the synergy of obnoxious craptitude have something to complain about regarding Lunatic's brief cutaway by twisting things to say that barely any and none are interchangeable terms. Well, in that case, Double Fine know exactly how to run a business, having an upper limit on 3DS play coins is a totally fair mechanic, and Helsing 920 exists. What? Don't go saying I'm factually wrong here, I'm speaking figuratively! Allow me to teach you the difference real quick. Well sure, if your idea of real quick is 21 seconds of patronizing tedium, I'm sure So Solid Crew would be proud. Frankly, if people need that difference explained to them, then that actually explains a lot about this video. You! You got what I need! Which is complete bullshit. Whoa, 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 language, man. I am, I don't even cuss on this channel. Good for you. You don't curse. Hooray! Not fucking relevant, you pleb. It was in response to something that happened in the video. It may have broke up the pacing out of nowhere, but it does have relevance in that sense of the word. The only actual problem is that the point is moot when you consider how Gligar, leaving aside how he's a troll, isn't accommodating for those who don't curse on their channels since he doesn't know about them. Come on, pick up the pace. You're here to entertain me, not fulfill a quota. Because after all... The Wii U has no third-party games. Well, uh, besides this, this, and this. And all the other 3DS games, but... What Sirius said about figurative and literal speech. Also, why did you say all the other 3DS games when he was talking about the Wii U? Because it was something in addition to the Wii U titles he mentioned. The fact that he caps it off with a... But... Tells me that he isn't actually treating it as an actual primary example, and making the point that Nintendo isn't a stranger to third-party support. Sure, it's not entirely related to what Gligar was saying, but your point still has that uncomfortable air of a nitpick about it. Okay, maybe you had a few when it first came out, but then third parties quit developing for it because the Wii U was a weak, underpowered, piece of garbage. And then he immediately starts drinking garbage. Why are you, st why are you drinking on camera? Like, can't you do that sometime later? Then why didn't you just cut that part out? Then why didn't he just cut that part out? I take back what I said earlier, maybe the approach involving throwing buzzwords at a dartboard does work wonders. Legit. Skip it if you have nothing to say and or nothing happens. It makes it a hell of a lot, lot less annoying for us, the watchers. And the last thing you need is annoyed fans. <laughs> Implying that Lunatic even is doing this for fan attention in the first place. Adding on to that, your artificial outrage over him not skipping the segment is moot, seeing as if someone starts doing something completely unrelated that can kill the pacing of the video, such as taking a drink on camera, it's a flaw that anyone watching would do well to notice. Hell, going by the flubs and audio editing errors throughout this video, that whole business of including tangential bollocks that could annoy potential viewers sounds mighty rich coming from you guys. Hell, this skit later on in your video is the embodiment of that. SEGA! Corner. Nine. But Kurome, your pet spiders are there, and they look like they're gonna eat me. And they're yours, so they probably will. Kermie, you still have those damn things? Well, fuck them, my bug poison is clearly not getting the job done. As if things weren't already bad enough, didn't you guys also leave in the entirety of Lunatic's intro just to make a half-assed counter gag and point out how lengthy the intro was when leaving in a significant portion and pointing out the length would have just sufficed? That intro was way too long. Hey guys, let's get some Blu-rays out, because Sloth Boy is pretty apt to the subtle art of projecting. Man, the replacement unsettling skip screen is better. Because... All that they have lined up for the Nintendo NX is some new Zelda game, which was going to come out on the Wii U, but it's been delayed over and over and over again. AKA, twice. See, this is why this guy needs to go to trolling school. Seriously, I, I can even see past that. So what if it had been two times? I should still tell us that the Wii U isn't strong enough to run the game. Since normally a game would get multiple delays, even if the console isn't powerful enough, or if the devs are being rushed. And with Zelda, it seems as if the former is the case. 
Uh, no, all the delays tell me is that Nintendo have a lot to put in the game, combined with whatever spit and polish they wish to add once the actual product is completed. If a lengthy development cycle that could accommodate many delays is a sign of starting out on underpowered hardware, then... Hey, hear that? That's the sound of what you get when a skyscraper's worth of Blizzard employees feels like their payoff has been trivialized by some nobody on YouTube. But you say he's just a friend. But you say he's just a friend. Oh, baby. Remaster is the Wii U's 2016 best Metacritic game. You realize we're only four months into 2016, right? I mean, that only came out last month. Geiger meant that so far, you single cell twat brain! Hush, hush, let those who actually have evolved beyond the protozoan stage talk. Lunatic's issue was with how Gligar was coming to the conclusion that the Wii U feels more like a dumping ground for remasters than a brand new IP, and 2016 is gonna have to do a lot to change that. Again, going with the idea that Gligar isn't a troll, the issue is on Gligar for his vague wording, not on Lunatic for counteracting the presumptive side of said vague wording. It's always better to be a single-celled organism than someone who hasn't even formed his own nucleus yet. Oh, oh, this guy's oh, oh burn! The amazing burn. fucktard. Yes, I'm gonna keep bringing up the drunken peasants livestream every time a sick burn gets associated with Sloth Boy. In fact, we all should. I know how much he loves it. What else was there? Uh, Pokken, which got meh reviews. Star Fox Zero, which was a train wreck, or plane crash, if you want me to be more accurate, and... I'm not even sure if that is accurate, if you ask me. And, of course... Uh, guys, nothing about how Lunatic missed the point of Gligar making a pun on the aviation aspect of Star Fox Zero. You know, plane crash, R-wing, flying vehicle, figure of speech for a massive disaster. Sorry, who's the vaginal brain single-celled organism again? You also have with the Wii U, um, not really much else lined up for this year. Because all that was lined up was Zelda, and that has been delayed to next year because of the NX. They want to release it when the NX comes out. I'm okay with it. I mean, I don't want the game to be barren and sort of just giant and just nothing else in it like Ocarina of Time was. Okay, yeah, but he said it was being delayed because of the NX. You, on the other hand, haven't said anything debunking his point. Instead, you state how you feel on Ocarina of Time, which has nothing to do with the point. You know, aside from having a massive open overworld and being in the same damn franchise, have, have you just forgotten which franchise he and Gligar were talking about? Wait, and, and that's pissing off lots of gamers. What definition makes those people gamers? They're gamers because they play video games! Also, irrelevant point is totally irrelevant. Please stop handling the word irrelevant the same way Kamiya Bams handles gender politics. It's not gonna end well. Lunatic was questioning if Gligar's statement of gamers refers to the actual majority rather than just those that follow Nintendo and their output. Sure, his point was somewhat tangential to what Gligar was about to start saying, but you're trying to say it's totally irrelevant when it's really not. Sure, it's gonna be even more casualized than it has been because Nintendo casualizes the shit out of their games. But <coughs> Super Smash Brothers. <coughs> Man, I need to get this cough fixed. Okay, two things. First of all, shitty acting is shitty. <laughs> Second of all, Smash Bros. was casualized ever since Brawl when it made the game easier by removing wave dashing and L cancelling and adding the Smash Ball. And yet, Smash still has a large amount of technical proficiency behind it and subtle techniques to it that would strongly hint that casualization exists only in the sense of the game having a simplistic exterior. With all the terminology in Smash Play that I could get from, say, Velmore's video on Chaos Key, if Smash Bros. has been casualized since Brawl, it obviously can't be by a massive degree. And that's of course ignoring how having a degree of casualization doesn't debunk Lunatic's point about how Smash Bros. is an outlier in how much Nintendo's games have dumped down. But you say he's just a friend. But you say he's just a friend. Because that is what's happening with handhelds. They are dead. So what the hell are these? Those overpriced pieces of shit aren't gonna sell well. You know why? Because because Nintendo and Sony both know that handhelds usually sell badly because games and handhelds are usually more money, and phones and tablet games are more or less money. Yeah, that's some rather speculative preview language regarding the sales of those handhelds. Well, leaving aside the questionable statement about the pricing of phones specifically, we can't read the future, so I'm sure that. Wait a minute, what's this? An article on Nintendo Life that actually provides actual evidence of the aforementioned dated sounding preview language? 
This is again leaving aside the fact that you are not debunking Lunatic's point. Gligar is saying that handhelds are dead, and Lunatic responds by saying that dedicated handheld gaming devices do indeed exist, with the idea that they're still being manufactured and they're still having games made for them. Yeah, sure, you can say all you like about how they're not selling well, or rather, won't sell well, but that doesn't mean the handheld market doesn't have anything to show for it in that regard, for the simple reason that handheld consoles still exist. You! You got what I need! Here's the thing with Nintendo systems. They're irrelevant now. And yet they made the new 3DS. Well... So what? It's not relevant because of the fact that Nintendo putting out mobile games still means that they're beginning to realize that mobile is a strong force in the market. Oh my lord, is it relevant on your word of the day calendar or something? Knock it off already! The 3DS is still being manufactured and sold everywhere, games are still being made for it, Gligar is preaching about how they're already irrelevant, Lunatic brings up the 3DS as a counterexample to that, the handheld's declining success doesn't change how it still has a foothold of some sort in the handheld gaming market. Hey, piss shit, you cut me off. Wow, really? I couldn't tell from the momentary pause between the two lines that undermines the entire joke. Well... So what? What, is comedic timing a tool of the patriarchy now? But you say he's just a friend. But you say he's just a friend. Oh, baby! I'll end my side of the argument with probably the most obvious. You presented poor arguments, and you fell for a troll all in one fell swoop. Well, that's certainly not changing the fact that it's entirely possible to bring up poor arguments to call out said individuals falling for a troll. Yeah, there were a few decent points that I did skip just now for the sake of time, but this isn't even a balance between the negatives and the positives, let alone the positives outweighing them. I'd like to thank you for wasting all of my goddamn time, because holy hell, this is the most no you I've seen in a while. Stop being tapioca pudding. Why? Just fucking why? Because he had counter arguments to what Gligar said. The end. You brought nothing to the table and you made shitty laughable points. Seriously, never do this again! You hack! You happy quack! Hey, who has two eyes, two hands, and just fell asleep at the mixing desk again, making clown dudes cringe where the artificial anger nearly blow out my speakers even when I turn the video's volume down to 10%? And the pertinent follow-up question would be, why would you ever let them edit again if he leaves shit like this in amongst all the other assorted editing flubs? I'll just end mine by saying, you've left a very bad first impression on me. Funny, that sounds like the exact same opening to this channel's top-ranking Yelp review. Oh, this guy's with oh, burn! You've left a very bad first impression on me, and the ranting community. Well, then you're pretty new around the remains of that particular community. I mean, God knows what kind of hissy fit you'd pull the next time you chance on Undertaker Freak. The fact that you willingly went after a troll just speaks volumes on your talents as a ranter and commentator. Or he likely just didn't care that Gligar was a troll and still wanted to get the counter-arguments out to those who might very well be taking his words seriously. I don't know, the possibilities lie sprawling in front of us. Try going after something worth the world's time. Yeah, real talent doesn't fuel the Gligar bandwagon. No, 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 no. Real talent digs up the corpses of Roaring Thunder Pursuit and Sirius Orionis only to put out material so wonderfully acclaimed that it prompts Wave to say, So congrats, Sloth Boy. I thought Meta was bad, but you just took the cake. Now that's what I call the kind of reception that screams going after something worth the world's time, doesn't it? So, what do we do now? This is the part where I kill you all. Ah, the old, we all die cliché. I should have seen that coming. Oh no, he's not going to. But I'm too young to die. So was I. You should have thought about that before putting me in a pit with Kermie's man-eating spiders. Where do you even get those anyway, Kermie? To be honest, I'm not really sure myself. Oh well, guess this is where we all die in some over-the-top fashion. Kurame, the skit was bad enough in the first place. Why would you think medium awareness will make it any better? I swear, one more and it'll end up summoning... him. Sup, losers. Wake up. Jason, I have a good question for you. Why did you kidnap all of us? Because vengeance. But DiCaprio isn't here. What DiCaprio? Leonardo DiCaprio? Because you know we can't get him. Uh, Mav? Why am I here? I mean, I get the others, but why me? Alright, let's do that thing that everyone loves me doing when I talk about your abhorrent audio quality. Map Station is echoey as shit, Kiromi is the leading runner in the trying not to wake my household Olympics, Snake is the only one who sounds halfway decent, and Clown Dude sounds like he's stuck in puberty limbo. Like, seriously, this is painful. I know most of this is all things you guys can fix, so how about fix it? Mav can take away the acoustics in his room, 
Jerome can fucking speak up, and while Clown Dude can't help but allow me to meet my pot shop quota by saying listening to Clown Dude is very akin to listening to nails on a fucking chalkboard. Because I'm OCD and I want even numbers. Roll the intro. But I didn't get a line. I said, roll it. Hold on, even as a sketch, this makes no sense. You're OCD about even numbers, then why is Serious Gamer here? Because it makes five people, thus isn't even. Clown Dude, I know you're the writer to this commentary and this is your first one, but this is fucking kindergarten, dude. Even numbers are two, four, six, eight, ten. Odd numbers are one, three, five, seven, and nine. Either you didn't count yourself or you should have never passed the first grade. So serious, me, Kurome, and Nihilistic Snake are doing a commentary on this guy called Lunatic the Game who did a rant on Gligar 13 vids. Now, instantly, at a snap of a finger, there are two things wrong with this video. One, it's a Gligar rant, and last time I checked, Gligar 13 vids was a overdone topic and a troll. And continuing with Clown Dude's point, this rant is actually a commentary. This means he lied. Either that or he's too stupid to understand the difference between a rant and a commentary. Either way, wouldn't surprise me. Why is him calling it a rant a problem? I mean, it's not like he's saying it's a fucking social experiment or parody as damage control to shield himself from criticism, so I don't see an issue here. This just really comes off as a nitpick at best. Enough talk. Let's get to tearing this apart already. Hey everybody, uh, Lunatic the Game here, and uh, I'm here to uh, talk about and sort of react to a video by a, a troll named Gligar 13 bits If you don't know what a troll is, if you're like, if you just joined YouTube like five days ago. Psst, point out the fact that he has no script, no need to keep a counter, that'll get tedious, fast. I have known about this guy since I started YouTubing, but and I've never had the guts to talk about him because I didn't have like the technology. I didn't realize I had the technology I could use until now, but I was like, do I really want to talk about this, this guy? And I was like, because I feel like all the things I said back when I was little, okay, not really little, I'm still little, but all the things I talked about when I was like 10 and 11, I actually um, never said anything about him, but I decided I should say something about him because it makes sense, and it makes a lot more sense to me that I actually say something, but it makes, I don't want you to go and check out his page or say anything about him, uh, to him. Cause it's a waste of- Hey, uh, any of you alive? I mean, there's five of you, and aside from Sirius, who isn't adding shit all aside from a cancerous counter to the video, anyone gonna speak up? Okay, that intro was way too long. A lot of it could have been cut out since it mostly is useless fucking filler. Hey, you're aware you can skip those parts, right? Yeah, leaving in filler only pads out your video, and all with the lack of interjections between those points, it makes watching the video as tedious as fucking possible makes it longer than it needs to be, and knowing that Sirius, your editor, can speed it up doesn't much help your case. It's 1 minute and 22 seconds long. Please get better now. Let's begin skipping. If you didn't have the technology to make the video, scrap the video! You don't want that door to open, that's too easy. Because Gligar is an overdone topic. Here's why I point this out, and pardon the tangent I'm about to go on. I point out the fact that pointing out Magical Pocky Usagi as a troll would be better, because for the sake of this argument, let's just say that she isn't a troll. The question then becomes, does she still stand by the video she made eight years ago? I mean, sure, there's no way of knowing for certain as her last video was made in 2009, but again, let's just say, for the sake of this argument, she does. She still stands by the video and thinks it's one of her best videos. At that point, you can still point out flaws from the video to debunk something that they still stand behind. Pointing out the fact that Magical Pocky Usaki is a troll is better on the basis of this shows that you shouldn't take your videos at all seriously and doing a commentary on it only gives her what she wanted at the time. I know this seems to go against a lot of what I've commented on in the past, and I know some people may call me out with some previous targets shown on this channel, but the difference with Sonic Master 16, EMG, Rants, and Pikachamp Gamer, some of my prime examples of this, is that Sonic Master and Pika were commentating on people who I eventually pointed out were trolls, and in the case of EMG Rants, it was a video that was impossible to tell if Sailor Moon Red 1 still actually stood behind as Google Hangouts could very well have updated in the time frame of half a year. My overall point, though, is pointing out the fact that Magical Pocky Usagi isn't relevant isn't actually giving them something to work off of, especially considering that you don't at all dive deeper into this point and just kind of give Astro Chan here the tip of the iceberg. So I guess it's a roundabout way of telling you to try again. Also, you have Black Borders Matter. Here are some remedies for this problem. 64-bit operating systems get shortcut, and 32-bit operating systems 
get OpenShot, even though OpenShot's a little bit slow, and Android gets Clive Editor. Guess what? The editor isn't the problem. I used to render like that. The problem is he's rendering in 512 kbps if we're using Sony Vegas sizes. His one picture avatar could probably fit the whole screen if he only rendered it in 1080 by 30p. You're giving him the wrong advice, thus showing you have no idea what you're talking about, and as early as it is, you really need to try again. Not knowing that Nintendo is headed down the same way Atari and Sega were. Because that's what's happening with Nintendo right now. So let's get to problem number one with Nintendo. They've got no third party games. Besides this one. When Gligar said Nintendo had no third party games, he meant that there was barely any. If he meant there was barely any third party games, I think he would have said that there were barely any third party games. I mean, after all, your group said that Gligar was a troll. More than likely, he meant that there was absolutely no third party games. With this in mind, that is. Taking that out of the equation, though, we still have the first problem to deal with, and even then I can point out several other games that are third party for the Wii U and Nintendo 3DS. So, whoops, looks like an accident. Now, I'm gonna skip the next interjection because all you do is drag out your point, and then Snake comes in to inform us that they're skipping, so meaning we're not missing much. Which is complete bullshit. Whoa, 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 language, man. I, am, I don't even cuss on this channel. Good for you, you don't curse. Hooray! Not fucking relevant, you pleb. Hey Kirame, guess you took a joke more seriously than Sirius does with anything Ryan tells. Probably Clown Tart, but you're the one unfortunate enough to deliver the point. Whee! Maybe you had a few when it first came out, but then third parties quit developing for it because the Wii U was a weak, underpowered piece of garbage. And then he immediately starts drinking garbage. Why are, you st why are you drinking on camera? Like, can't you do that sometime later? Then why didn't you just cut that part out? Legit, skip it if you have nothing to say and or nothing happens. It makes it a hell of a lot, lot less annoying for us, the watchers. And the last thing you need is annoyed fans. <laughs> oh, that's funny because I think I told you the same fucking thing earlier in this very same video, Snake. I know calling you hypocrites doesn't necessarily prove you wrong, and while I know this is you we're talking about, Snake, the delivery of this line made it seem like it was absolutely important, and if skipping over pointless shit is such a big deal, then pointing out how you didn't skip the long-ass dragged-out intro becomes more relevant than anyone may be led to believe. Because all that they have lined up for the Nintendo NX is some new Zelda game, which was uh, going to come out on the Wii U, but it's been delayed over and over and over again. AKA, twice. See, this is why this guy needs to go to trolling school. Seriously, I, I can even see past that. So what if it had been two times? That should still tell us that the Wii U isn't strong enough to run the game. Since normally a game would get multiple delays, even if the console isn't powerful enough, or if the devs are being rushed. And with Zelda, it seems as if the former is the case. Serious, this doesn't debunk what Lunatic said. I mean, yeah, if the delays were actually what he was arguing, you may have a leg to stand on, but all Lunatic did was A, show he still doesn't understand the concept of troll, and B, correct Gligar in saying that it was twice instead of, and I quote, over and over again. You completely missed the statement and actually strawmanned what Lunatic said. Good job. Keep in mind, the Wii U doesn't even have a Zelda game, but it has two remakes of Zelda games. In fact, the Wii U this year, you know what the highest rated Wii U game is this year? First off, bro, I want to point out that it's late April. What Gligar meant was at the time of the recording, not the end of the year like you're assuming. What even were these interjections? Seriously, Lunatic's interjection here is totally worthless, and Kirome, you trying to debunk a pointless interjection with more pointlessness is kind of, well, redundant. This is another clown written line, probably. I mean, it practically screams interjection for the sake of an interjection with something I'd expect from a first commentary. So, hey, clown dude, because I'm blaming you for this, never do this shit again. And if on the off chance this is actually Kirome's fault, all of you in Sock collectively beat him upside the head with a soap and a sock for me. Remaster is the Wii U's 2016 best Metacritic game. You realize we're only four months into 2016, right? I mean, that only came out last month. Geiger meant that so far, you single cell twat brain! Hey, guess what? Still doesn't debunk what Lunatic said. Sure, Lunatic doesn't necessarily debunk Gligar here. In fact, if anything, he confirmed what Gligar was saying at the time, and you don't at all point this out. I mean, it's not like he was even really arguing. He just said give it time, as it was still very early into the year. Why is this so hard for you? I'm almost tempted on throwing in a second try again point. Actually, you know what? Yeah, no. Try again, again. Whee! 
And to make matters worse, Nintendo is abandoning the people who bought into their handheld ecosystem. And you don't want to know why? Because Nintendo is releasing a new Fire Emblem and Animal Crossing on mobile. Sega did that too, but it was a good thing until they realized they didn't have enough money. Sega is irrelevant to the topic since Nintendo is just not moving the mobile. And Sega's been there since flip phones were a thing. Also, this is about Nintendo and not Sega. So, can we not make comparisons, Kirome? Isn't it a legal thing to make a comparison to something else that went through the similar process to make a point off of said comparison? Once again, it doesn't negate Liger's point, but what I'm focusing on is your shutdown of his comparison, which he has every right to make. And even then, what his comparison implies is that Nintendo would have a better chance with the mobile market than Sega did, as Sega didn't have enough money to switch to mobile. Whereas, let's be honest, Nintendo does hands down. This means his comparison to Sega is not irrelevant and not pointless, and all it did was show that you don't do much paying attention. SEGA! Corner. Nine. Ah yes, the video is doing commentary on itself for me. Am I even really needed here at this point? Now sure, it's gonna be even more casualized than it has been because Nintendo casualizes the shit out of their names, but- <coughs> Super Smash Brothers! <laughs> <coughs> Man, I need to get this cough fixed. Okay, two things. First of all, shitty acting is shitty. Second of all, Smash Bros. was casualized ever since Brawl when it made the game easier by removing wave dashing and L canceling and adding the Smash Ball. But those final smashes, though. Well, Sea Snake, the thing is you're not 100% correct. The fact that there's a competitive scene for the newest Smash Bros. shows that it's not just a casual game. Seeing as if you have a competitive scene, you obviously open up for competition, which doesn't really make it all that casual. Now, could you make the argument that just because it has a competitive scene doesn't make the game a competitive game? Well, sure, but if you're really going to be making that kind of argument, then you're strawmanning me to the utmost degree because I never said Smash Bros. couldn't be played casually. And I'll have to ask you to sit down, shut up, and let one of the other four talk. And... Just to cover my basis, bringing up arguments that there's more of a competitive scene in Melee, so therefore Nintendo won't pay as much attention to the competitive scene in later installments, may I point you to those wonderful change logs that balance characters and make playing the competitive more fair, which, when you put in the context of what Lunatic was saying in response to Gligar, makes Lunatic more right as Gligar was trying to imply they don't give a shit about competitive play, which is easily debunked by Smash Bros. alone. Likely, because that is what's happening with handhelds. They are dead. So what the hell are these? Those overpriced pieces of shit aren't gonna sell well. You know why? Because because Nintendo and Sony both know that handhelds usually sell badly because games and handhelds are usually more money, and phones and tablet games are more are less money. Well, debatably. Here, I'll let 2011 Ricky Ray kind of give an argument against this. iPhone 4, it's $200 minimum. iPad, $500 minimum iPod Touch, $230 minimum, and the 3DS's survey says... $250! <laughs> Ignoring the cataclysmic math fail, yeah, two out of the three devices are cheaper. At first, with the iPhone, you have to pay about $40 a month minimum for a service plan. Essentially, you're paying for a brand new 3DS game, every month and the ipad you have to pay about 130 dollars extra if you want wireless 3g oh sure the ipod touch doesn't have these problems but guess what the 3ds has its own version of the app store where users can buy much smaller and cheaper games so they don't have to spend about 40 dollars a minimum for a new game every time nope all that's needed is a wi-fi hotspot and about three dollars minimum that's it now, yeah, this comes from 2011, but let's stand back for a minute and look at it even now. You're actually probably spending more still on mobile than you are handheld games. I mean, sure, the games themselves can range from free, but bitch please, if you say they give a lot to play with much more replayability and better quality, allow me to knock you over the head with the lead pipe while laughing at your pain because the fact of the matter is, even most free games are only half-finished bootlegs that force microtransactions onto its player in order to get the full experience of games that are also debatably half-finished pieces of shit that force microtransactions onto its player in order to get the full experience. This is the reason there's more than likely always going to be a market for handheld systems and games. They, most of the time, give players more to play without forcing them to shell out $5 every three steps they take. Me Tomo showed this, and I bet the new Animal Crossing is going to be a smash on mobile too, because everybody's going to download it, even if they have to pay microtransactions up the wazoo. For one, wazoo isn't a word, and two, I don't even remember Nintendo putting microtransactions in their games. First of all, wazoo means ass. And second, he said even if. 
they have to pay, implying that even if the game had microtransactions, it will still sell. I mean, just look at Candy Crush, which had microtransactions and the most scum developing company on the planet, but it still sold well. Yeah, so did Angry Birds, Temple Run, and Flappy Bird. That's only really four big selling mobile games, which shows that the market is inconsistent as all hell, especially when you consider all of these free games don't actually force microtransactions down your throat, which is probably why they're so popular. And you could probably make similar arguments regarding Mitomo and Pokemon Go also being free games with optional microtransactions. My point is, though, they are a popular minority when you sit down and look at the games that are available to the public, which is not a good market. Even though Nintendo fans complain about microtransactions in gaming, they were complaining about Skylanders and shit like that, too. One know happened when Amiibos came out? They bought into it. He actually has a good point here. I didn't buy Amiibos, though, because I believe they were just stupid and just a waste of time. Like crazy. And that's what's probably going to happen with Nintendo's mobile games. See, we're going to download them like crazy anyway, and the final nail in the coffin will be put in the handheld gaming. Here's the thing with Nintendo systems. They're irrelevant now. And yet they made the new 3DS. Well, so what? It's not relevant because of the fact that Nintendo putting out mobile games still means that they're beginning to realize that mobile is a strong force in the market. Hey piss shit, you cut me off! Suck it bitch, you snooze you lose. Right, allow me to go on yet another tangent, starting with something that has been annoying up until now but wasn't brought up because here's where it's most relevant. Serious, as the editor, could you know how to cut out those awkward moments of dead audio? For these kind of joke segments, you require fast pacing, else it comes off as incredibly awkward because here it sounds like Clown Dude was opening up for someone else to take his point instead of him doing it, making Kurome seem more in the right to that joke, which makes the joke not work. That aside, let me tackle the point given here too. You realize you can tackle multiple markets, right? The fact of the matter is, Nintendo already dominates the handheld market and I don't see that changing anytime soon. They've also got a rather large foot in the door for home consoles overall too. And sure, they're releasing a Nintendo phone, or rather hinted at it, but that just shows that they're trying to branch out at the very least. I mean, could this potentially change in the future? Sure, but with what we see now is what we've got. And it's all speculation and assumptions in the end, so it doesn't really debunk the point Lunatic was making. But we'll get back to this here in a bit. Also, by the way, they have the 3DS. That thing is the best-selling handheld console ever. I'm sure they'll survive for a while, I mean, with that thing on the loose. One, the 3DS isn't the best-selling handheld console, you dumbass. That honor goes to the DS. Two, so what if the 3DS is beating the Vita? The 3DS and the Vita are both failing, compared to smartphones anyway. And three, Nintendo won't just survive on handhelds and consoles since the smartphones are rising, so they needed handhelds, consoles, and mobile to stay alive. Which contradicts the point Kurome made earlier. You see, the old saying goes, two heads are better than one. By that logic, five should be amazing. Except when they're the entirety of the syndicate of outcasted commentators. Whee! I'll end my side of the argument with probably the most obvious. You presented poor arguments, and you fell for a troll all in one fell swoop. Great job. I'd like to thank you for wasting all of my goddamn time, because holy hell, this is the most no-you I've seen in a while. Not once in this video did Lunatic bring up a no-you point. A no-you point at its core is where you point out hypocrisy, which in what you showed us in the video, he did not do once. You're misunderstanding the meme. You're misusing the meme, and if you keep that up, Master TP10 is gonna have to shake it. Alright, who wants to be first? Plus, he's a troll. Learn the internet. Why? Just fucking why? You brought nothing to the table and you made shitty laughable points. Seriously, never do this again! You hack! You happy quack! Jesus H. Christ, don't eat your mic, you prepubescent fuckwit!